Hey everyone, this is Daniela from Findable Digital Marketing and I got another video for you. <laughs> so as you know, I've been interviewing SEO specialists all month long on our Facebook page. We've been doing Facebook Lives and today I've got the fifth video of the month um, and it's about podcast SEO. So I spoke to Akila Tompkins Robinson about her podcast and how she's been able to use SEO to organically grow her podcast to 100,000 downloads with no ads, just organic marketing. So um, she shared so much information about her journey and her tips and, and hacks. And so I hope you find it interesting. If you wanna see more Facebook Lives, just head over to our Facebook page and you can see the whole calendar. And uh, and yeah, I hope you like it. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know in the, in the chat box below and uh, enjoy to expand more about um, more into online visibility and I actually have a software coming out soon too because oh um, what a software yes it's software a <laughs> <Sorry>. software <laughs> yeah like um, a real software a, yeah like an online tool it's a content oh. writing tool so it's um it's basically people you know you, it's a SaaS it's pretty much software as a service yeah, yeah. so it's it's a website and you you know get access and you go on and it'll help people to write their content um because you don't stop do you out there. I tried to and it does not like work in the beginning of your call you're just talking about burnout and now you're telling me you have a software <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's part of the thing because we like, we did the, we, we did a really big push to hit the 100K and we did it right around the time of a launch and my assistant is getting married. So, <laughs> so that's another thing. She does most of the podcast stuff. So she's getting married next month, but of course she needed this month to do all the things. So I was like, you know what, out of all the things, and then we've got the software happening. I was like, out of all the things, let's just take a summer break on the podcast. So, yeah. It sounds like you, your whole team deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're live. <laughs> oh, we are. Cool. <laughs> well, hi guys. <laughs> I was like, what she's talking about is related. So I'm going to let her keep talking, doing her thing. I'm going to set this all up. I'm still setting it up. Um, okay. No, I think it's really, really cool that you are, you, you've kind of found a way to kind of grow and not just do the one-on-one -on -one thing is to make it a lot more accessible to people. I was at a co-working space earlier today. I actually came running home. Um, and uh, I was talking to a website developer that I had just met and he's like, Ooh, the elusive SEO, nobody knows about it. And I'm like, it's a pity because there are so many resources out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess people get overwhelmed by the resources. And that's what it is. I think because things like, Ooh, the elusive SEO, <laughs> Uh, when people say things like that, it scares people before they even like open a book. Um, and then there's just so, there's so many things about it that people just like, just get nervous, just get scared, just like run away from it and don't even kind of venture into it. Like I tell people like, look, you spend a lot of time trying to get like Facebook ads yeah. and believe yeah. me, SEO is so much easier in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah. And you can, you can do it. Like you don't need to invest so much money up front. Right. Exactly. And you can kind of do it at your own pace. Right. And you don't have a campaign and a deadline to, to work with. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. And you're not tossing away like money before it even works. Like right. you know, people are tossing away testing and like, no, you just write some content, <laughs> you get a few backlinks. That's pretty much it. And then so, repeats. Just keep yeah. it. Yeah, don't stop. Repeat, That's a thing, repeat, right? Pivot content, pivot backlinks. Like just, yeah. So when I tell people that, it's like, oh, okay, that's a little bit easier. And it's that's a lot easier. Like, right? and so I think that's what it is. I think, um, unfortunately, SEO's got like a bad rap of being something like super techy and super hard. And it's really it's really not, especially with the things that are available nowadays, like in terms of the content that's out there, in terms of the platforms and like, okay, SEO was hard when I was coding websites. Mm. That was hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> WordPress makes it so much easier. You yeah. know what I mean? Like now they've got fields that tell you what they are. Are you kidding me? We can do this. <laughs> yeah. It seems like technical SEO is what intimidates people, but then then again, people know very little about technical SEO. Like I'm, I don't think people know what sitemaps are or mm -hmm. you know or like href flags like i think people just hear meta descriptions and meta title and they're like oh 
Exactly. Exactly. I, I be, I'm, I'm right there with you on that one. Yeah. I think it's just um, people are afraid. Well, let's get into it then. So mm-hmm. tell us about you. Who are you? <laughs> Yeah, since we've been chatting, right? Um, so I am Akila Tonkins Robinson. I am, like I said, the owner founder of Girl Get Visible. And Girl Get Visible is all about helping women entrepreneurs. We've got a couple of guys too, so my guys get visible they out there. <laughs> um, but it's all about helping women to use things like SEO and content marketing to get out there, get found, and get visible. And so, like we were saying in the very beginning, I've got a book, I've got a podcast. I do training. I have some one-on-one clients, but I don't do as much one-on-one as I used to. And now there is an online tool coming. (laughs) So um, the whole world is around helping people to really share their voice because really that's what a lot of SEO is and a lot of um, what's lacking. Like I tell, another thing I do, like when I'm talking to a new client or talking to someone who's just interested and and we're talking about the technical SEO, but that's not the first flag I see when I do an audit. Mm -hmm. It's not about, do you have your tags or do you have a site map it's really like half the words that people are telling me out loud is not on their site (laughs) so your site doesn't even say what you're trying to get found for so a lot of what I do is trying to get people just to get what's what I always say here and here out onto the screen onto their websites that that's very very well said can you tell us a little bit about your podcast how did you get into pot I assume that you haven't always like you didn't start this this business venture with the podcast or maybe you don't okay so tell us how did you get into podcasting and um what you podcast about and how you grew it the whole journey so um I'm not sure when when everybody started listening, but I'll go back a little. Um, so I'm a little bit of a wayward pa- podcaster. I will admit that. I know there are hardcore podcasters, and I will tell everybody I'm not gonna say I'm not hardcore, but I'm not one of them. So I never try to <laughs> say I'm that person. Um, but I did start podcasting along with my business. So originally I started out helping out online re- retailers, and even before that I did web design, graphic design, which is how I got here. Um, but when I started really teaching and coaching and training people, I I decided to start a podcast because I was like, you know what? There's so many things out there that people need to know. And then at that time I was working with retailers and there was so much like, you know, they knew the fashion, they knew the industry, they knew the clothes, they knew the people, but they just did not market it. And there's so many industries like there, like out there like that. So like, you know, I work with a lot with um, spiritual coaches and spiritual leaders mm-hmm. who have the same thing. There's so many things out there, but they don't know even um, self-help and self-care. Like they can tell you how to relax, get your stuff together. They can, you know help you with therapy but marketing is just not that thing (laughs) not the thing that they know so there's so many industries that just don't know how to get themselves out there and so that's what I started doing with online boutique stores and that's why I started the podcast thinking I'm gonna help people get themselves out there I'm gonna help people really find their voice share their voice and all that expertise that they have in their space help them to share it out with the world and so um I guess a little bit wayward because we took some breaks I took some long breaks (laughs) um and I just literally I you know I got a mic I listened to a couple of other um podcasts or like some of the gurus of podcasting got my lips in account because I um host on lips in and just you know invited people that I knew I was in some programs. I had some pretty good guests on, um, still do, but in the beginning, I definitely had some, some really like monumental guests that helped along. And then I just, I just started doing it. I just kind of, you know, ripped the bandaid off, didn't plan, but so much and started doing it. The one thing that I always did really well, and it's just because this is how I write, thank you, thank God, um, is I did everything with SEO in mind. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about what are the keywords. I'm always thinking about when I plan my topics, what are things that people are searching for? I've got some fun topics that might be, might not be in like the search profile, but you know, I'm always at like 60, 40. And at one point it was more like 80, 20. What are things people are searching for? I'm always trying to answer the questions that people are asking because my whole thing is if one person asks out loud, a thousand or 10,000 people are searching for it in silence in Google. 
<laughs> so I always started, I started with that in mind. So I started with, you know, really meaty, good show notes and all that other good stuff. And that helped my show to really organically grow, even with only a few episodes, even with me being a little bit wayward, which is why I tell people I'm wayward. <laughs> um, even with taking gaps, my show would continue to grow. Even at one point, I took a long gap, like a year long gap. And I looked at my stats. Because one thing I will tell you, if you ever podcast and decide you need a break, still pay that lips and bill. (laughs) They will keep your shows up as long as you still pay the bill. (laughs) So that is like the one bill never to let go of. Um, But I looked at my stats and I was still getting like a thousand and two thousand hits per month. And I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't producing a new episode. A thousand, thousand hits a month, up to 2000 hits, like during the really good months. And I wasn't doing a thing. And I was like, you know what? I need to get back to this thing. Because it's doing really well um, without me doing a lot of the work, without me having to do a lot, it's still producing and still producing. And so that's what I did um, the couple of years ago, so maybe like two years now, um, I started transitioning from working just with my online retailers to, you know, exclusively teaching, not exclusively, but mostly teaching mm-hmm. SEO and online visibility. At one point I was talking about all the things like pricing, where to get your wholesalers. I had everything. Um, and I started really pivoting to just the getting found in search and getting the traffic piece. At that time, I also started pivoting my show to more being solo episodes. And so now I don't have one guest every um, week. And that one, I can, uh, again, be very transparent with you guys. I like to be honest, just so you guys, you're all like, I just met her. She just tells everything. I do. Um, because I know it's going to help and hopefully it's going to save somebody. Um, but when I decided to do solo episodes, it was kind of twofold. It was one, because I had a lot to share and I had a lot to say, but it was two, because it was a lot less daunting than trying to find a guest and then making sure the guest episode was out in a certain amount of time and doing the show notes. So just even to keep up the production, it was like, look, I'll do the talking. <laughs> You know, I guess I've got an assistant in my business and she does, you know, putting it up there, but it was just so much easier for me to do things like batch record because that's like so critical to be able to do like four or five episodes at a time, get it done, and then going on to do some of the other things. And I would not, or I was not able to do that all the time when I was bringing on a lot of guests. So I made that little bit of a pivot where I did more solo episodes than I did guests. And then just recently, Mm -hmm. like the last this year, I'm kind of getting a really good medium of, you know, some guests and some me, some guests, some me. Sometimes I have so much of me. I'm like, wait, I got to say this next month. (laughs) I got some guests that need to get out. So I'm still kind of working on that. But um, but that's been pretty much my podcasting journey, just kind of working through it, feeling it out, you know, doing hopefully all the things that need to be done. And, and um and keeping the show good for people to listen to even if they're listening to an older episode i still get downloads you know it's not one of those shows where people only listen to the new episodes people still almost like 50 60 percent per day when i look at like the numbers will be older episodes people listening back to you know episode like the first 10 episodes and it's because they're all relevant content and because they were all created with seo in mind You touched on so many things that we're going to talk about today, right? So how to grow your podcast organically doesn't just mean using meta descriptions and keyword research. It's like the strategy of SEO should be in your mind whenever you create podcast episodes. Like you said, like, are you creating content that people are actually searching for and care about? Um, And the, I think I like that you mentioned solo versus guest because I'm sure from, like you said, a production, like a content creation point of view, there is an advantage to solo, but I also wonder if maybe you can feel free to like jump in and tell me, but when it comes to having guests, do you think early on it's nice? It's an advantage to have a guest and does that help you grow organically? Do you see any sort of advantages from the growth point of view of having a guest? Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. And it's one of the reasons why I now still have guests. <laughs> um, not the only reason for my guests out there, but um, having guests because guests themselves and whether you've got a guest who's like an emerging, I don't like to say small business, but emerging business, or you've got like a big name guest, people are searching for them too. And they are going to continue to grow their businesses. So as they grow their business, they're always going to have you listed as one of the shows they were on, mm-hmm. or people are always going to be searching for them. So um, I always tell people, like I have kind of almost three tiers, like my 
emerging smaller business guests, my kind of middle, you know, they've got an audience, but not a huge audience. And then like my high, high, like, you know, you've got 100K followers, like people that um, on the show. And I try to get a little bit of all three mm -hmm. because all three contribute to your growth because your emerging smaller businesses, like I said, you're going to grow with them as they continue to grow their business, as they continue to share themselves, they're going to share you. And if you were one of the few to give them a chance, guess where you're going? <laughs> As they go up, you're going to go up too. But And they're also going to be the ones to help share it out more. Yeah. They're also going to be the ones excited. Like, I was on the show. Let me share it with all of my people. And they're going to, again, share it again and again as they grow. Um, middle folks, they're a little bit in between. They may not share as much because they've got their own agenda of things that they already have planned out to do. But they'll still share. They still do have an audience. You know, you, you have those kind of conversations. And so that's where, like, the middle folks go and again people are searching for them and then the big names like the larger people who have a larger audience they may not share that much but they are definitely you are going to be now part of their profile you can share that this person was on if they don't share it it's okay you can share and tag them um i even do this with some of my content like a couple of was it like last year i have no concept of time especially with covid <laughs> time is like out the window with me but not too long ago I did a podcast episode on the top five books that I like. Um, it's like five books to get your mind right for business. Mm -hmm. And um, I've shared five different books, just authors that I like, like no connection, no relation or anything like that. Um, one of them was Mark Schaefer and I tagged him on Twitter and guess what? He tagged me back and we connected, <laughs> you know, just from being on there. But now when people search, when people search for the book, they now see kind of that. So the same thing with having your guests. When you you have people that people are going to search for, um, people will see them, you know, see their name and they'll see your show. Rachel Miller is another one, um, another person who I had on the show maybe two, three years ago, like she was on show a while ago. And um, I still am on page one for her name. So okay. every time she launches and she's like, she's like the SEO of Facebook. So she builds Facebook pages and builds huge audiences. And it's amazing every time she launches and people are looking for her, they find my show because I had her on the show, you know, way back when, but they find the show. It's good evergreen content that people are always looking for. They listen to it. So I continue to even get downloads just from people who I've had on the show, you know, years ago. So definitely having guests is beneficial. And then even the profile of guests that you choose, you know, mm -hmm. emerging businesses, like the middle businesses, huge, huge businesses. If you can get a good mixture, um, you're going to do nothing but benefit your show. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, okay. So when you first started, did you have an audience? I did have an audience. Well, I had my SEO audience because I was doing SEO first and I had my site first. So when I first launched, because this is actually how I got to my first um, guest, I was like, look, this podcast is new, but I know I get really good traffic. I think I was getting at the time around like 10,000 hits a month mm -hmm. to that particular site. And I was like, okay, they're coming to the site. They're going to listen to this podcast. Please be on. <laughs> And so um, I did have that kind of audience. I did not have like a Facebook audience yet or like the Instagram or like I didn't have the social media audience. I don't think I like having the social media audience to connect with and engage with, but I don't think that's where you need to start. I think everybody needs to come to your site first, personally. <laughs> and so it was website visitors listen to your podcast in the end. Oh online. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause my, my podcast, which we really didn't talk about that part. My podcast has always been the house of it on my, my site. And so um, anyone listening, I definitely recommend don't, I know like Libsyn or Anchor, they all give you like a site for your, a page for your podcast. Don't use that. <laughs> Make sure you have a section on your website. Make sure you're episodes and your show notes. I don't even use a lot of fancy plugins. I literally do a post and I embed my episode in every post. And most important, when I share it out, so if you ask me for a link to an episode, I'm not going to go to iTunes, which most people do, go to iTunes and grab the link. I'm going to give you the link to my website. Mm -hmm. Same thing I send to my guests. When I send to my guests and say, hey, your episode is up, I send them the link to my website. So that's another little gem I'm glad you brought up um, to make sure that you've got your home base for your show. Yes, it'll be available all the other places, mm -hmm. 
but your home base to your show should be on your website because it's going to get you a lot of the SEO benefits, a lot of the search benefits. People are going to see it. People are going to, who visit your site are going to see your show and people who visit your show are going to see your site. Mm -hmm. So you want that kind of cross thing happening. Perfect. I love that you brought that up. Um, and we're so transparent about how your journey and how you got started. So when it, you mentioned Lipson, um, when we talk about podcast SEO or pod, growing your podcast organically, I guess it's, how do I say this? So growing your podcast organically could be, is very general, right? It could be on any sort of channel, but when you talk about podcast SEO, we're usually talking about SEO on a specific platform like iTunes or, or Spotify. And I've been, trying to do research about this for a while and it seems you tell me is there a lot of research or information about how these platforms um rank their podcasts do we know anything about their algorithms there really isn't especially um itunes is probably the most elusive <laughs> Because they, uh, the, over the year, like they change. Some people aren't sure if it's working. They are sure. Like there's this, this new and noteworthy thing, which I never got new and noteworthy. I just will tell you guys, that I will admit, um, it's the elusive thing. Um, so there's all these different, I know there's, uh, what do I use? Chartable that tries to tell you some of your rankings, but how you actually get ranking is always a mystery. Um, but in my mind, and it's my little SEO mind, when I see a search box, I know all I need is keywords. <laughs> all I need in my life are the right keywords. So I am very adamant of no matter what platform, you know, I'm going to, like I host on Lipson and then Lipson sends it out to like iTunes, Stitcher. I'm on um, Google Play. Google, I don't even know if it's Google Play anymore. Google's <laughs> thing, um, Spotify, all the things. So I'm on all the things thanks to Lipson. So Lipson does that work for me. What I do for me is I make sure that I name them really well. So I use some keywords in the names. I make sure that I actually name them. Like a lot of people have like episode, especially if you have um, guests, I'll see like episode in the guest name, but people have no idea what that is. And that's yeah. even for me as a yeah. podcast listener. Oh, so annoying. That's what I say. It's the most annoying thing. Cause like, I want to know what this is about. Yeah. I don't, I don't know right? who this person is. Like. Yeah. <laughs> or even if it's a person that I know, I still want to know what they're talking about this yeah, time. Like, what are they, sure. what are they caring? About? What they do for work? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, making sure you name it properly is one really important thing. And having what I call like meaty show notes. So I make sure the show notes have um, a good deal about what it's about. I use, I like to use like things that you've learned. I use questions. Like these are the mm -hmm. questions that are answered. So I don't tell you what's in the show, but the questions are what people are usually searching for. People usually search like, you know, how do I do this? Or why would I do that? Or compare these two things. So those questions are literally in my show notes that have come out, like that are answered in that episode. So I use the questions, um, of course, their bio, if it's a guest that's on the show. And so I have like what I call meaty show notes. <laughs> not long, but meaty, like really important. Like it's not necessarily having like a 600 word show notes. That would be long for those platforms, I just want you to know. Um, it could be 100 or 200 word, but if it's meaty, meaty is important. <laughs> having all the right things in there. And so with that, I know that even though, even if I'm not new and noteworthy on iTunes or, you know, coming up in all the other platforms recommended this, I know when someone is searching for a specific topic, which I do this myself, like if I want to work on my email marketing, I'm going to go and look at email marketing and let's try to find episodes about email marketing, which is the way a lot of people search. Mm -hmm. And so if I have those media show notes, I've got some good titles, I know I'm going to come up in those search engines. Even if I even if I don't exactly know how, <laughs> most of them work. You can say the right things, you'll come up for the right things. And so I really focus on that, which has helped me to do well across all the platforms. Although I can't tell you, I can't tell you exactly how Apple's ranking me. I can't tell you exactly right. what Spotify's doing, but I can tell you I get downloads from all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. so I know I'm coming up in somebody's search somewhere. Yeah, it's there's really no information about the algorithms. Uh, so mm -hmm. we. Don't know anything about the platforms, but it's like, you know, basic website SEO just applied to these different platforms. So from yeah. what you said, the search box is really what you want to prioritize. You want to get those, you want to know what people are searching for. Use those keywords in the show notes and the title predominantly. Use frequently asked questions. 100 to 200 words is enough. 
make it fleet, uh, make it meaty, not fluffy. So yeah. <laughs> these are great tips. Um, so there's this rumor going around that they can listen to the podcast episode. So on YouTube, there's a, apparently this is all like, nobody really knows, like this is the elusive part about SEO. Apparently on YouTube, um, YouTube listens to the first one, one minute and it, and if you're, the, the tip there is to use the keyword within the first one minute because YouTube can listen, but I'm not sure if YouTube can really listen or it's just looking at the captions. Um, is there something like that on podcasts? It, do people in the podcast world um, talk about this? You know, is the I have heard, believe it or not, I've not heard it in the podcast world, but I have heard it more in the SEO world. Okay. Um, so I have heard a lot more about like maybe like the last, like going into like 2019 to 2020 and now going into 2021, a lot more about auto, audio and audible search. So mm -hmm. their ability to listen. I've not heard that it's that great. <laughs> and I can tell you, I don't normally, like when I have an interview, I like it to be like this. I like it to just be a conversation. So I don't try to pad it with anything or tell people anything to put in the front or anything like that. Um, and I talk the same way on my show. You've listened to the show. I talk the same way on my show. I just start like, hey guys, what's going on? And da -da 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 -da. I actually ramble right the first, <laughs> the first minute or five. Um, so I talk about like random other stuff. So I don't necessarily try to play to that audio search, but I have heard, I have heard that rumor and I can't tell you that my intro, so I actually have an intro that has words too. It's got like a little bit of a song and then I come in with, you know, we're the girls who do this and this and this. <laughs> um, and so that does have a few keywords in it, you know, uh, but that's a probably about as much, I don't really, I don't really play as much to that. My thought is once I got somebody on the show, I want to make sure they have a good experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to try to be too robotic or too kind of, you know, trying to make sure I play to the algorithms. But I have heard, I haven't even heard it with just one minute. I have heard that they are starting with more audio search. And I think it's because of things that now can do some um, like computerized transcription. And so they're doing that at like a rapid pace and they're going to start pulling in. And that would really help like when, when the way I've heard it is like, it'll really help us in Google more because right now, your Google only sees your show notes. Right mm -hmm. now, Google's not really seeing, or transcripts, if you're putting out your transcripts as well, um, Google's not really seeing everything that you say in an episode. So if they actually do start looking at the audio, the actual audio and listening in or transcribing, then reading in, um, reading into our episodes, then that's actually going to just help us more. It's not going to hurt us at all, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to voice SEO, so I've been doing some... I've done, I did a project related to it about a, about a year ago. Um, and so I try to keep up to date on it. It's still very, very new and there's not a lot of data about it. But when it comes to voice SEO, uh, structured data is really important. And like you said, having questions, frequently asked questions, right? Because when we talk to Siri or Alexa, we're asking questions. And so if you use questions in your content, for example, in your headings or you're in your titles, um, then you've you got a leg up so yeah i think you're right that it comes down to the content that you're creating and then just make the podcast really good and people want to stick around and listen past the first one minute introduction right mm -hmm. um now so you know in seo there are there are some like direct factors and then there are indirect factors like metrics right so bounce rates are people engaged with your content these things indirectly help your SEO is, um, do you think that's also a factor on these platforms that if people are listening, um, leaving reviews, they're sharing it on social media, are there such thing as backlinks and social signals? Do you know if these platforms are paying attention? So I know, especially on Apple, I know they are really, really hardcore in your reviews. Mm. So reviews make a huge difference no matter what the keywords are. <laughs> 
um, I know that's that's really a big factor. I'm not sure the other, um, like this, like I said, the Stitchers and the Spotify's and stuff like that. I'm not sure how much they care about reviews. People don't tend to review those as much um, or on those platforms as much. But I do know on Apple, that's a big thing. So reviews are definitely a um, huge thing there. Metrics wise, I think they all take a kind of look a little bit at how many minutes someone is listening. So same mm-hmm. thing, almost like YouTube looks at the yeah. how much people are actually listening through an episode. So I think that makes a big difference. And for that, I try to just make sure, uh, me personally, I try to make sure I have a good um, a good timeline, a time frame to my episodes. So my episodes are generally between 20 to about 50 minutes, even if I have a really good interview and it goes over. So like I have, believe it or not, my sister <laughs> talking about, but she's talking about government contracting, like, which is what she does like for life. And so she was a really good episode hour and a half interview so I had to break her up into two because it was just too long because Mm -hmm. you're going to lose people because most people are listening to podcasts during commute or when they're on a run they're doing something that generally will take about a half an hour to an hour so if you are go over that like I've got some like one I love a podcast called drink champs and it's about hip-hop greats it's not just drinking Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so um but I love the app I love the show but some of their episodes are like two hours and I'm like, no matter how much I love Nori, I just cannot <laughs> listen to him <laughs> talk to anyone for two hours. Could, could you imagine? And so sometimes I have to like break it up between rides. And so it's, it's um, so if it's too long, then you're going to lose people. Also, if it's too short, I've seen people like, well, I'll just do five or 10 minute episodes. Hey, I don't know who's, what you're saying in five, 10 minutes. That's a whole nother story. But also that messes up people's flow if they're, if I'm driving and I've got a 30 minute drive, I'm not gonna keep moving your episodes every 10 minutes, especially if I'm a frequent listener, because like somebody else might, who's binge listening, they might listen to three at a time. But if I'm a frequent listener and I've got 10 minutes and then I don't hear again from you till next week, well, what am I gonna do with the other 20 minutes of my commute? Mm. So what I'm gonna do is choose a good show that's a good about the size of my commute <laughs> before I even get in the car and I'm gonna listen to them as opposed to listening to you. Mm-hmm. So those kind of things matter in terms of, you know, just humans and how we re- react and re-listen to different podcasts and then how much, you know, you actually get listened to in metrics wise for the actual system, so. Do you think the, pla- have you noticed in your own experience that the platforms pay attention to um, or that you've, yeah, the, the, the platforms pay attention to social media signals. So if people are sharing it a lot, do you see that it's pushing you up or? I haven't seen that at all. Yeah. No. I, That's I, the I, one thing I could say that social media, I don't even know. Yeah, I, don't, I have not seen that. I don't even know if they connect them at all. I've not seen a lot of signals. The sorry. only two ways that you have um, got traffic or sorry, listens was from your website when you first started and those show notes. And just on the platform itself, do you do a lot of social, do you rely on social media to get listens as well? I do share it on social. So I share it on social. Okay. So that's, that's one thing. Like we make sure we share it. I don't think it's my biggest driver. Most of okay. it does come in organically, at least at this point. I know in the beginning we shared more, um, that kind of thing. I don't run ads to, to the show at all. Um, maybe, I can't even remember if I've run an ad to an episode. Mm-mm. I don't think I ever have. Not I think about it. I don't think I've ever had. So I don't do that. But we do share on like, we share on the Instagram page. We share on the Facebook page. Um, sometimes I share it on Twitter. Actually, I think Lipson might share on Twitter automatically for me. So thank you, Lipson. Wow. <laughs> One thing I don't have to remember. Um, sometimes we share it on Pinterest. The other thing I do is like, we share like the week it comes out. And then we'll share it again in like a month later or share it again three months later. So I'm constantly resharing, resharing stuff um, all of the time. But they aren't really, it's really, and I have a Facebook group too, so it's really more to keep my, my social media folks knowing that there's content out there and that I produce content, not necessarily, my goal is not to like get a whole bunch of people from a social platform. Right. I don't rely on it. That's incredible. That really like goes to show yeah. how effective um, your strategies are. Yeah. Um, so you, let's talk about tools. You mentioned Chartable. Um, how well there are two kinds of tools right there are analytics 
who's listening and the, the metrics behind that, but also a keyword research tools. Do you use the ordinary research tools or do you use one that's specific to podcasts? Tell me about all the tools and analytics that you use. Okay. So um, for Chartable, and I just really got into Chartable and it really just tracks you in the, tra in the charts. I don't even know how accurate it is, but it's nice to see. <laughs> It'll say like, oh, you're like up, you know, up here in the U.S. And oh, no, you're down today. Like, it's really, it's like analytics, but not as in-depth as analytics. Most of my actual show metrics come from Lipson. So I've got the plan that has a little bit more metrics. And really, only things I pay, not say pay attention to, but the things I look at the most are how many downloads in certain given um segments of time and what episodes are still doing well so like i said about 50 60 percent per day um and i don't know this because i kept you know quoting this on my launch <laughs> to tell people how effective this stuff was um but i know that a good number of my downloads per day are older episodes not necessarily the episodes that are even from that month so like let alone that week so people are always going back and finding episodes it gives a little bit of information on how people are finding them like what platform they're coming from some of those numbers look a little skewed to me always. So like, it'd be one from Spotify, but it'd be like 1000 from Apple. And I'm like, mm, something's wrong there. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, the other place I do is just looking in Google analytics because I have all my, because most of my episodes or not most of all my episodes are on my site and I have them like different posts. I can easily just go in there and see what posts have like the most traffic come, coming to them and where they're coming from. So I can use Google for that too. Now that doesn't catch people who are just in the app. So that I don't only catch people who are coming to my site. So I can see more of like true organic, not the people who are in an app or search for it in the app or my subscribers, those folks I will only see in a platform like, like Libsyn. Um, so those are how I get my show notes, my show analytics and know kind of what's working, what's not. Keyword research, I always use the same tools. I use Longtail Pro. I've used Longtail Pro forever um, for actual keyword research. I've just started playing a little bit with Uber Suggest. Um, they're getting better. <laughs> I actually compare them to Longtail Pro. And so I can say that literally within the last couple of months, their numbers have like been on par, which is which is nice for those who are using Chrome. What Uber Suggest, I, I had to use it earlier this week. Um, because my, my tool was like down and whatever. Anyways, long story short, I used it because um, it's free. And I was like, oh, but this stupid tool. I hate this. I hate Uber Suggest. It's so off. Uh, but I was like, wow, okay, this time it's gotten a lot better. And what I noticed is that um, they give you more data when you create an account, when you sign on with like your Gmail. And so that there's an incentive for people to create an account. And when you create an account, it will ask you for permission to see, to get access to your Google search console. So I think what they're doing is that they're getting data from all these millions and millions of people's accounts on wow. the search console. And that's probably what's, sorry, that was, that was a little bit of a tangent, but I just thought it was super interesting. No, 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 no. I mean, it's good to know because I've been saying the same thing and I'm always, because I, you know, I work with clients and I do a lot of training on this. So I'm always telling people what to use and I like to recommend free tools if I can, yeah. if there's anything good out there because I know people want the free tool and I'm like, really long tail pros are the best, but if you gotta have free, try this. And so I've been tracking how they've been doing and how well they've been doing, but that makes sense that they've already, um, they're, they're starting to now tap into other accounts. So pretty much they're doing what Google does. Yeah. So Google gets us all to put on our UA code and now they've got everyone's data. And so now they're getting our, our Google data and now they're starting to aggregate that against each other. It's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Smart Neil Patel, smart. <laughs> so, um, so those are my two main keyword research tools. Um, I also use SimRush, but I use SimRush not for their keyword research, um, more so for when I'm doing like audits and kind of the other stuff that I do just on sites to find out um, how sites are performing. Mm -hmm. why, why don't you use SEMrush? I also have SEMrush. Why don't you use it for keywords? What's, I've never heard of Longtail Pro. Probably because I've been using Longtail Pro for so long. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to say that because I've been using long, long tail pro for so long and that's all they do some few other things, but like how Uber suggested now becoming another sim rush and trying to do a little bit of everything. Long tail pro is the, like really dedicated to keyword research. Mm -hmm. And so they've always been the best. They've got the best related keywords. Cause I can tell you that Uber suggests to me, the related keywords, they're really just looking for other things in the alphabet. <laughs> 
like that have the same starts with the same words or yeah. same letters and so it's not i like uber i mean long tail pro they're really going out there and seeing what other people have searched for around so I'll, I'll tell you the story of how i even came up with starting online boutique source was because i was i created online boutique source with seo in mind and at that time i was doing web design and i web designed for a lot of retailers so i was doing keyword research around like e-commerce online stores online retail and online boutique was the one that came up with you know not a lot of competition but really good search volume and it was because it was a related it was related to the other things so if i was using something like uh, uber suggests i would have definitely crapped out on that because they would have only been looking for like e-commerce or e-commerce light or e-store like you know it was kind of stayed in the realm of but um that's so that's another reason like not because of just online boutique but i've always seen it do really well with related simrush um i just don't I, when I do like a, um, when I do like the dashboard view and I see like keywords, things are coming up for, it looks pretty good. But when I like see their related keywords and I know they say they've done more with their keyword tool, I just haven't really gone back in there because I just don't like how they do with their related keywords. I think related keywords are super important when I'm doing like working with a client or doing an audit or something like that. Um, they really make can make or break someone's FCO profile. You know, mm -hmm. if you've got the standard keywords, if you've got some good related keywords, you can get a lot of traffic from related keywords using like synonyms that other people just aren't even thinking of. Right. And so when I look at a tool that doesn't really bring that stuff in, I'm like, yeah, you're not for me. <laughs> Back to long tail pro. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why I, I kind of head back over there all the time. I'm going to check it out because it, it definitely would eliminate, I know for myself, like it would eliminate a step, right? Because it's, it's too concentrated to one word, right? When you want to know words that are kind of similar, but not exactly the same. So yeah. anyways, okay. Um, now let's talk about repurposing. So you mentioned show notes and transcripts. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about using show notes. Um, I guess that's what you put in the in Libsyn, for example, or Anchor, or whatever platform you're using. A hosting platform is that the right? Yeah. So there's a podcast host, and then there's your website host. So okay. um, a podcast host is is really just that. It just holds your it holds your um, your actual files, and it syndicates it. It puts out an RSS feed to everyone else. So that's how like the iTunes and all of the things would get it. Anchor does the same, but Anchor also allows you to do some other things because it's made to be like people's only site. I do not mm -hmm. recommend using it as your only site. Don't do that. <laughs> and then I have my actual website, my website, which is my web, I think all my website hosting. So um, what I do, my show notes, they go on Libsyn, not for Libsyn to publish out like as a page, but really for Libsyn to send when it sends out the RSS feed. That's where my show notes go. Then the other place I have my show notes, like the real, the, the big show notes, that would be on my website. So it'll be a, a blog post on my website in my podcast category. Do you recommend people to, um, so I imagine that your show, I haven't, sorry, I haven't checked your website show notes, but what I've seen a lot of people do is that they just summarize um, the episode really quick and then mention some resources or things that they mention and that's pretty much it do you recommend that people elaborate and turn repurpose the podcast episode into a blo full-blown blog post like long-form content not necessarily a full-blown blog post i i don't just summarize the show what i do is really i sell the show um so i open up you know while we're talking about like an SEO episode, I'll talk about, you know, SEO is still important and SEO, these are the benefits of learning SEO. In this episode, we talk about all the different ways that you can implement, or like we talked about tools, all the different tools that you can use to get to the best results. Um, and then I'll say something like, you know, what we learn and, and questions like, you know, what's the best keyword tool? What's the best this tool? You know, which ones are going to give you the best data? How many steps do you need? So that would be some things we might've talked about in the episode. And then anything we might've mixed like links to anything so I have a very specific show notes formula and my the formula is not just to summarize because I don't want people to read what they're going to hear I want people to want to be enticed to want to listen to the whole episode mm. so everything as I write it it's really just why is it relevant to you you know, not just saying, oh, here's what I talked about, but why is this relevant to you? Although you're going to listen to the episode and you're going to hear why it's relevant, but if you never get that far, if you only listen to 
you know, you're only reading the, the, the page, I want you to see like, this is important for you because of X, Y, and Z. So I want to talk about why it's relevant for you. Um, then I want to say, you know, what you're going to learn without telling you what you're going to learn. So that's the other thing that I do and then it's really important. And then of course the links and stuff like that. So um, that's what I do in my, my show notes. I don't do transcripts. I know you mentioned transcripts. I don't do transcripts, but I've heard some rumors in some of my podcast groups that we might want to be disability compliant. <laughs> And I may need to start. And if I do them, it'll be like in a PDF and a link. One of the reasons why I don't do full transcripts and I would not want my episode to be the full transcripts is because people are going to read all of the talk. You know, just naturally you talk in between your words and stuff like that. People want to read about that much. Um, so I need to still like put it in a format that it's going to be easy for somebody to skim, that they're going to see some bullet points. And of course, I want, to I want them to actually listen to the episode, not just read some of the stuff. I think that's a good point that you mentioned because the, those that do recommend on the articles that you see online, whether or not you should, you know, turn your podcast episode into a blog post, that whole conversation, people typically say yes. And it's always for the search engines. It's not for your user. And I like that you point that out. It's like, realistically, people are not going to read it. Um, what you read and what ultimately what you want to sell at the end of the day is your show, right? You want to get downloads. Um, and so, yeah, having enough show notes to get people on search engines to be ranking is more than enough. Right. And yeah, so yeah what you said, the transcripts that's about being disability compliant is a whole other conversation, but it's a different yeah, that's like a whole other episode, but I'm yeah. listening. <laughs> awesome. Well, I don't have any other questions. Let me see. It seems like, let me see if there are any questions from the audience. Just give me a moment. My I haven't even looked at my phone. Live. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Froze a bit. Hold on. And if, and if you're watching the replay, of course, you can, drop your questions below, or I'm also going to turn this into um, a blog post, a short blog post and a, and a YouTube video. So this it's going to be available forever. Send me the links. We share them out. So. <laughs> I'm always a good guest. I share out stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not required. It's only if you want to. It looks like we don't have any questions. That's odd. That means we did good. <laughs> Yeah, I think because there is not a lot of information about the algorithms, it's pretty straightforward. But I thought what was, for me, the biggest takeaway of this conversation is that you don't have to rely on social media. Um, and that I thought it was really impressive that you said that you're, you get a lot of listens from your older episodes. So, you know, if you don't get those listens early on, don't worry about it. Just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And it'll come with time eventually. Yeah. Really, it's like my one tip, like if I can give anybody one tip about how to have a successful podcast, it's really the topics you choose. Those, those topics that you're going to, I mean, I say they're first topics, but even throughout your show, having good topics that people are searching for and people are looking for is going to be super important. It's more important than the guests you choose, more important than the platform you have. Most important thing is to make sure you got some good topics. Mm, that's, that's a good point. So what do you recommend to people that what what do you do so if you're creating content that people are not that your content is not searchable um but it's entertaining what do you recommend in those situations how can people grow their platform i would say like if it's entertaining there's something that's searchable in that entertainment even if you okay. don't have like i've got a business podcast so you know lots of business questions come out of that but say you talk about sports or say you talk about um you know a lot of good podcasts about tv shows and stuff like that there's something that people who are into that show are looking for i never forget when um i think it's the it's the walking dead when glenn died <laughs> couple of years ago and I never watched The Walking Dead but I do remember the whole buzz of all of these like shows and all of these think pieces and all these long blog posts because people were googling things like is he really dead did he really die what happened um, so you know even if you like I said if you got something about tv shows depending on what the genre is and everything you can even in entertainment there are things that keep people engaged and that people are mm. looking for about that that you can still pull in those episodes what's the hottest show going on what's the 
the hottest team? What's the big controversy? You know, this week in, in my group, I was talking about trending topics. You probably got to stick on trending topics a lot more if you've got more of an entertaining show than something more of like a, a businessy topic and stuff like that. But those are things that people are constantly looking for. So you still have to pay attention to what people are searching for, what people are looking for. And those are the topics you want to talk about. Yeah, that's a that's a good example, right? It's at the end of the day, you're still looking for what people are searching for, but you can't rely on such a long term strategy, right? You've got to pay attention to what's hot right now. Yeah, um, you got to almost be like the the new news. Consider yourself a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> you are now like the new news reporter, new entertainment news reporter, whatever you're doing, because you need to be on top of this is what people want to know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then hopefully you can get repeat listeners that way right people like your mm -hmm. side like that you're that you you're in the know and they rely on you to be that source of information oh, i like that it was a good tip um well i don't have anything else so if you're listening and uh and you're watching the replay feel free to leave your comments and your questions below and um and yes well thank you so much for sharing the time and a piece of your brain it was so interesting <laughs> to hear your story and i hope it's helpful to other people where can we find you online you can find me. I'm Girl Get Visible everywhere. Well, McKeel Tom because Rob isn't everywhere, but I'm Girl Get Visible. So the show, the podcast is Girl Get Visible. My site is girlgetvisible.com. Um, I'm Girl Get Visible on Facebook and I'm everywhere. Girl Get Visible. And for those who are just getting started with topics and like some looking for ideas of what kind of topics to use, I actually have a freebie for them. I have a freebie download. Mm -hmm. um, it's called, it's at girlgetvisible.com slash 101 blogs. And what it is, is 101 blog topic ideas but those blog topics can be podcast episodes too so you can take them and just apply them right to your show and start you know creating around it perfect and if you send me the link to that i can add it in the, in the show notes we'll, do. <laughs> well thank you so much akila and it was so nice talking to you and staying in touch and uh yeah have a good day hey thanks thanks for having me and it was great talking to you too ciao all right bye